All right, shall we start? Konnichiwa, yoroshiku onegaishimasu. This is the only Japanese I, I started yesterday. And the two now, I don't know how to speak. Thank you for coming to our session in Japanese. So I will say thank you again for coming to our session. <laughs> okay, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name is Tom, and uh, I'm now working for IBM China uh, Cloud Foundry development team. And today, uh, the three of us, uh, we will help to share uh, our experience on deploying Cloud Foundry on OpenStack. And uh, there are two other speakers I want to introduce. The first one is Dr. Max. And Max is our well-known expert in Cloud Foundry community. And the other one is Edward. And Edward is now pair programming with me in China uh, in the Cloud Foundry community. So uh, this is the agenda that we want to discuss with you all today. And uh, we wanted to uh, divide uh, the agenda into three sections. Uh, in the first section, we want to introduce briefly uh, about the Bosch project and uh, how to use Bosch on OpenStack, uh, and followed by a demo to deploy Cloud Foundry using Bosch on OpenStack. And the second section, uh, before the summit, we did a survey in the community, and we want to show the feedbacks from the developers and the users in the Cloud Foundry and OpenStack community uh, to you all. And uh, finally, we want to share our lessons learned uh, during our trial on deploying Cloud Foundry on OpenStack. Okay, so let's start. So first thing, uh, what is Bosch? Uh, I just want uh, to know how many of you have ever heard or used Bosch before. Would you please raise your hand? Okay, cool. Maybe half uh, of the people here in this room. Uh, and uh, Bosch, of course, is a Cloud Foundry project. And uh, Cloud Foundry as a platform, as a service platform, uh, it can be built uh, based on some infrastructure as a service system, such as OpenStack. So when Bosch was born, it was designed and implemented to deploy Cloud Foundry on ICE systems, such as OpenStack. And Bosch, generally speaking, is a release engineering and deployment management tool. And in the past, the main target for Bosch is to deploy Cloud Foundry on various uh, ICE systems, such as OpenStack, SoftLayer, AWS. But now, the target turns to be more general. Now it's targeting on deploying distributed, large-scale distributed software uh, in the cloud. Here I just uh, listed one link at the bottom of the page, and uh, this is the official website for Bosch. And if you are interested in uh, Bosch, please take a look at this website. And there are many useful resources and uh, Bosch releases on this website. So as a de uh, deployment management tool, uh, Bosch uses many new concepts in the deployment area. And the most important uh, concept in Bosch world is release. So what is a release? A release is a versioned collection of uh, configuration properties, startup scripts, and the software source code, and all the installation artifacts uh, that will be used to deploy distributed software in the cloud in a reproducible way. So this is the definition for the Bosch release. And we can divide a Bosch release into several jobs. And each instance of the job for a Bosch release can be deployed in the cloud on a single virtual machine. And job can depend on a set of packages, which stands for the software source code or the installation files. And of course, a package can depend on another set of the packages. So here we can see an example. Uh, the size is not very perfect, but 
uh, this is a typical uh, Bosch release uh, of Cloud Foundry. And in this folder, we can see that uh, there is a subfolder named jobs. And in this folder, uh, it will collect all the necessary job uh, that to be deployed in the cloud. And for each single job, we can see the spec of the job. And it will show the definition of the job and also a list of the packages here, this part of this job. And go back to the top of the, the folder, we can see that another important uh, subfolder is the packages. And here we listed all the necessary packages that need to deploy Cloud Foundry uh, in this folder. And each package will contain a, a reference to the source source code in this folder. And uh, by organized in this way, Bosch can deploy the uh, full Cloud Foundry into the cloud, like OpenStack. So the second important uh, concept in Bosch is deployment manifest. Uh, deployment manifest is written and provided by the user. And uh, in this file, this is a YAML file, and in this file, it contains two important sections. The first section is, uh, will include all the release relevant information, uh, such as the jobs, the packages, that needed to be deployed in the cloud. Uh, this will tell Bosch what to deploy. And the second section is the configuration properties of the ICE system that Bosch want to deploy this release to into. For example, if we want to deploy Cloud Foundry onto uh, OpenStack system, then we need to configure OpenStack environment relevant information in this section. And so for each kind of the I system, uh, we need to prepare a deployment manifest. The, but the convenient uh, thing that Bosch provide us is we only need to uh, write the deployment manifest uh, for once, and then we can replicate uh, the most content of the manifest for each of the I system. And everybody who has this deployment manifest can deploy and manage the deployment in the cloud uh, everywhere. So Bosch itself is uh, distributed software and the two of its most important uh, components is Bosch Director and the Bosch Agent. So Bosch Director is something like uh, uh, the Bosch server or the Bosch center. Uh, we use Bosch Client to talk to the Bosch Director and tell Bosch what to deploy and uh, where to deploy. The Bosch director, uh, the, the Bosch agent resides on the single uh, virtual machine in the underlying ICE uh, system. And the Bosch agent will communicate with the Bosch director periodically to deploy the jobs and uh, maintain the deployment. So how can Bosch uh, to communicate uh, with the underlying ICE system? Uh, the, co the right component is the external component, uh, cloud provider interface, which is short for eCPI. In the past, it is called CPI because CPI is part of the core uh, Bosch code. But now we have separated this part from uh, the core Bosch uh, code base. So we call it external uh, cloud provider interface. And uh, Bosch, uh, when during the deployment process, Bosch need to uh, create and manage the resources uh, in the ICE system, such as create virtual machines, create volumes, attach disks, or manage networks. So all this work uh, are being done through the eCPI component. So this component will try to use OpenStack uh, REST APIs and try to manage and create resources in the ICE system. And also the last uh, important com uh, component is the stem cell. Uh, actually, stem cell is a special VM image in the ICE system. Uh, this VM image will contain a pre-built Bosch agent inside the image. So each virtual machine that launched based on this stem cell will have a Bosch agent running inside the virtual machine. 
this will help the Bosch director to communicate with the Bosch agent in the uh, virtual machine. So understand the other concepts. Now we can see how to use Bosch uh, to deploy software on OpenStack. The process is quite simple, only four steps. Uh, the first step is to prepare OpenStack environment. This is of course. And the second step is to deploy Bosch itself. As we said before, Bosch itself is a distributed software in the cloud. And then followed by using Bosch to deploy as a distributed software in the cloud. In our case, we'll be deploying the uh, Cloud Foundry in OpenStack. And finally, we will verify the installation. Ah. So this picture uh, typically summarized uh, the, the whole process of using Bosch to deploy a software in the cloud. Uh, uh, for the first step, we need to use a Bosch client tool named the Bosch init and prepare a deployment manifest. It's also a YAML file. And the Bosch and CPI re OpenStack CPI release and use the Bosch init deploy command to help deploy the full Bosch in one single virtual machine in the cloud. So the rectangle here uh, shows all the components of a Bosch. And after Bosch is deployed, we can see that then we can use the uh, Bosch CLI the Bosch client and prepare the Cloud Foundry release, upload to the Bosch director, and then use the Bosch director to deploy the full Cloud Foundry into our OpenStack, the right side. And this picture shows the typical topology of the Cloud Foundry uh, deployment in OpenStack. Uh, notice that this is just uh, a prototype and minimized deployment of Cloud Foundry. And each rectangle, the blue rectangle here, stands for a Cloud Foundry uh, node. And each will reside on a virtual machine in the cloud. Uh, knowing that uh, for the production level uh, deployment, we might uh, need multiple uh, nodes for each of the Cloud Foundry nodes. For example, if you are familiar with Cloud Foundry, uh, all the applications will be running on the DA node. So in this case, uh, if you want to deploy a production level uh, Cloud Foundry, you need to maybe hundreds of uh, thousands of uh, DA nodes in your cloud. So this is just a prototype and an example. So now uh, we can see a recorded demo for using Bosch to deploy Cloud Foundry on the OpenStack. We have already uploaded the full demo onto YouTube. And uh, in the last page, we have added the link to the video. OK, so the first step is to deploy Bosch itself, as we said. Uh, there is a, sorry, there's a, uh, there's a word named uh, microbosh. Microbosh means all in one Bosch in one single virtual machine. It means that we deploy all the Bosch components in, in one single machine. And in this demo, we will use OpenStack Kilo version. Uh, but the, f the same process can be uh, used on OpenStack, Icehouse, Juno, Kilo, and Liberty version. First, we have a clean environment, OpenStack environment, no virtual machines. And the before the Bosch deployments, we need to provide, uh, pro uh, prepare several things. The first thing is to provide a new security group. This will define some special port that uh, the virtual machine will open to communicate with the Bosch director. The detailed uh, configuration rules can be uh, read on the Bosch.io website. And second, we need to prepare a, a key group. And finally, we just need to assign two floating IPs to deploy. One floating IP is to deploy the Bosch, and the second the floating IP is to deploy the Cloud Foundry. So here we can see the 
uh, microbars deployment manifest. We just need to prepare the release information in the manifest to tell Bosch what to deploy first. And as we said, and also the jobs we want to deploy. For the first step, we want to deploy Bosch itself. And finally, we must config the OpenStack relevant uh, properties in the manifest, including the endpoints and all the key names. And after that, we can use Bosch in the tool to deploy Bosch first. This process may uh, compile and install your OpenStack CPI on your local machine and use this CPI to talk to OpenStack environment. Now the Bosch init will try to create one virtual machine to deploy Bosch in OpenStack. Okay, so now finished. Then we go back to OpenStack. We can see that there is a new virtual machine created and all the Bosch components now is ready on that virtual machine. So we go back to the console and use Bosch client to target to the Bosch director. Now we can see the detail Bosch director information, the, the IP that we just, this is the floating IP that we just assigned. And this is the UID of the Bosch director. And now the first step is finished. Then we can see the second step. The second step is after the Bosch is, de is deployed, then we can upload the Cloud Foundry release and deploy Cloud Foundry on OpenStack. Now, it's only one virtual machine that running micro Bosch. First, we want to upload the stem cell, the VM image onto Bosch director. And Bosch director will try to upload the virtual machine image to the grounds. And then we can upload the Cloud Foundry release, it's a table. Here is uh, lessons learned. Uh, the Bosch deployment manifest can be very long, although it's a YAML file. Uh, for instance, the, the Cloud Foundry deployment manifest we used in this demo can contains 2,000 lines of code. So it's not suggested to write the manifest manually. Uh, Cloud Foundry community provide uh, a, a useful tool named the SPIF to help you generate automatically uh, of the, 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 the manifest. So what we need to do is just to prepare a YAML file. This, this file is short to list all the properties needed for Bosch to deploy the Cloud Foundry and then use SPIF command to generate the manifest. Here we can use this command to generate the full version of Cloud Foundry deployment manifest. And then we set this deployment manifest. Now we deploy the Cloud Foundry on OpenStack. We can see that during the process, it will create a lot of virtual machines in OpenStack. Now the process is finished and we go back to the OpenStack console. And we can see that there is a lot of virtual machine created. So now we can target to the Cloud Foundry system and try to push one sample application to try the, uh, to verify the installation of Cloud Foundry. 
this step is just to target to the Cloud Foundry environment, use Cloud Foundry client. Okay, this is the final step to verify the Cloud Foundry deployment. We all know that for almost all the pass system, uh, the most uh, simplest way to use pass is to push some applications into pass. Here in this demo, we prepare a hello Cloud Foundry Ruby web application. And we try to push the source code into the Cloud Foundry environment. This is the folder that we put all the source code and then we use the sing single command, CF push. And now we can see that for each of the application uh, deployed in the Cloud Foundry system, it will be assigned a unique uh, URL. So we can use this URL to visit uh, the application. Now we can use curl command to pin the application. So the application responded, hello Cloud Foundry. It proved that the application is running in the, op uh, in the Cloud Foundry and Cloud Foundry is running on the OpenStack. So this is the demo part. Okay, so for the next section, I will hand over to Dr. Max. Thank you, Tom. So what you just saw was when everything works. The reality is it doesn't always work. And the reason, uh, well, I guess we'll find out some of the problems that we've uh, experienced. But importantly, what I want to mention is that <coughs> All of us participated as part of Bosch, the Bosch team itself. So we spent time at Pivotal, and Tom and Edward even have contributed in the past, I would say, six months, um, you know, directly into the Bosch backlog. So they have a lot of experience directly working with Bosch and various other clouds. And what we've always seen, and certainly I have also when I was working with the Bosch team last year, is that. OpenStack was the problem child. Um, we at IBM, of course, are here because we believe in OpenStack, so we'd love it to be the best cloud. But the reality is it, it had a lot of issues. And some of it were based on instability of the clouds. We tried various different providers. There's no need to mention their names, but including IBM's, you know, clouds. And there was always a problem. And every time a new release of OpenStack would come out, there would be even more problems. So what we kind of thought was maybe we should survey the community and find out also what kind of problem they have. So maybe as part of this survey and as part of our effort to try to get OpenStack to be the best, we can identify maybe the top problems and then see if we could solve them. So that's kind of the results you're gonna see here. And then after that, my colleague Edward will go over some of our experience directly trying to solve some of those problems. So this survey was done to about, uh, to various communities, so Bosch, CF, and then internal groups inside IBM, SAP, and various other places. So what you're seeing here is the first time we're releasing the results. Um, so the first thing we ask is, you know, of course, we want to identify who you are uh, if you're responding to the survey. Uh, the survey was open, so it's, you know, it's not targeted to people. And we found that about 60% of them are operators, which is exactly who we're trying to target, so the people that are managing you know, Cloud Foundry. Um, of course, we want to make sure that they are familiar with CF, because otherwise you know, that particular response may be less interesting. And we found that the vast majority of them were sort of familiar with the different concepts, so, so that was good. Um, another problem is, of course, 
you know, because we want to focus on OpenSAC, um, we wanted to make sure that the survey responders were familiar with OpenSAC, and we could see that about 50% of them felt they were intermediate users, so not no newbies, you know, for OpenStack. And then, of course, since the whole point of the survey is to try to find out if they experience any problems, it was very interesting to see that no, very little number of them, like 5%, experienced no issues. Most of them experienced some issues, some of them saying significant issues. And we've also collected a lot of the re the responses in terms of what kind of issues, uh, which I'll share with you a little bit. So, of course, you know, what we also wanted to know is if they had to customize OpenStack uh, to get it running. And about half of them, you could see, had to make some special customization. Ideally, you would want your cloud to be, you know, out of the box, something like CF, which is a complex distributed system, should just deploy. Why would you have to customize OpenStack for a complex system? After all, we're building a cloud, right? We should be able to deploy those things. So we're finding out that it's not quite there yet. And some of the things we're seeing, uh, as you saw, is that a lot of them are seeing instability in OpenStack. Um, you remember this complex web that Tom showed you um, has different components that are pinging each other all the time, right? Because we want the system to be up and running. So the VMs have an agent on them, at least the Bosch board, right, that's communicating with the director to find out what it needs to do next. It has a bunch of jobs running on it that are being monitored. So when one goes down, it restarts them. Then you saw there was also the console agent and various other agents, and then there's also the health monitor. So the system is, I wouldn't say it's self-healing, but it's trying to be self-healing. So it's trying uh, the best it can to keep itself up and running. So because of that, it needs the network to be up and running, it needs enough storage, it needs you know, the VMs to be running. So when things go wrong, they kind of restart. But when things go wrong so much, like it becomes unstable, you kind of get stuck and you have to redo your deployment or restart. And we've seen this multiple times. Um, so this is the pain. So this instability of OpenStack, at least in the various versions in the past, um, caused us in the community a lot of issues. Another very important issue that we've experienced and that the community has also experienced is issues setting up networking on OpenStack. And I think this is an issue where a lot of people are shaking their heads that other people have experienced as well. And I guess, you know, with the keynote today, we saw that a lot of focus is being spent on the networking part of OpenStack to make it a little bit better. Hopefully that will be fixed in future versions. But it's definitely a, a real issue right now. And you can see there is a few other problems, of course, um, that, that they've experienced. Um, finally, we wanted to also figure out you know, what version, and most people are actually using newer version. I mean, of course, Liberty, they're not using sort of much newer than when we did a survey, but you can see most of them are on Juno and Kilo. Uh, and like the demo we did was on Kilo. And of course, another point of interest, we wanted to see were they just using uh, remotely managed, meaning you know, using big vendors like IBM or HP or SAP to run their open stack versus their own local? And it turns out that most people are running their own local, right? I mean, that's the beauty of open stack is you could have it any way you want. And what we saw is that they're mostly doing local management, more than 50% of them. So with that, let me pass uh, to the lessons learned from our experience. So what you saw was the community's experience. And then after that, we'll conclude and take some questions. So t Edward. Thank you, Max. Um, so um, OpenStack and Cloud Cla Foundry are both complex uh, platform. Um, so to keep, uh, keep it simple, we start from a very basic uh, environment. We use the uh, DevStack and uh, uh, very basic uh, tools of uh, Bosch to deploy Cloud Foundry on the one box. So uh, here we uh, all of the work are, are based on the very basic uh, environment. Um, here's, a, here's a summary of our, of our uh, work. We have successfully uh, deployed the OpenStack uh, release, including Icehouse, Juno, Kilo, and Liberty on 
uh, open uh, uh, OpenStack uh, release. The, um, the Cloud Foundry uh, looks uh, um, um, uh, look at this environment uh, in the CPI uh, level. So um, from this point of view, I think um, is um, um, thanks to the uh, uh, a component of fork which uh, encapsulates the um, the, o uh, the OpenStack API in such a way that uh, it is very stable for uh, Cloud Foundry's uh, boss project to uh, consume the uh, API. So uh, we can see the result is a very um, um, encouraging us. Um, um, but um, uh, we still have some le lesson learned. Um, um, we will cover later. And also a second point is uh, um, when we uh, deploy the uh, OpenStack environment, uh, we, um, uh, we found the configuration, the, the basic uh, um, parameters of local conf is almost the same, uh, except the branch name. So um, it is pretty um, amazing, I think, at least uh, from this point of view, um, because it's very basic. Um, and uh, uh, the last one, I think, uh, the deployment manifest. We didn't uh, ma made some made any changes on the deployment manifest for for the f uh, for release of OpenStack. So um, that means um, it is pretty um, um, uh, efficient for us to uh, start this work, and um, it is very um, quickly for us to um, deploy the uh, environment. But uh, the first one is the um, the first one is most the most uh, um, difficult one, I think, because uh, you have a lot of uh, uh, configuration problems and uh, some ha ha lot of troubleshooting. We will cover later. Um, the first uh, uh, lesson there, I think, um, you need to prepare a network environment for, for this box uh, to deploy Cloud Foundry or OpenStack. Um, uh, for Cloud Foundry, uh, to, um, we need uh, uh, to launch the more than 16 uh, VMs um, as a basic uh, 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 deployment. It requires the IP, two floating IPs, one floating IP for uh, direct, another uh, floating IP for uh, for the Cloud Foundry to use uh, to in, in interact with the outside of the world, and uh, we also need to the uh, stat static IPs and uh, uh, private uh, dynamic IPs in OpenStack. So here we, we can see the two uh, YAML file. One is for direct, another is for the Cloud Foundry itself. Uh, this is this uh, network configuration is very basic. Um, but uh, uh, when you grow to your cloud, uh, the it will become very complex. You have to deal with the uh, whole environment. Um, another uh, uh, lesson is about the disk space, um, because this is one box. You uh, we can um, we didn't uh, uh, find this problem in one uh, in one box, but find it on another box because the disk space is. Uh, uh, not enough. Um, we uh, I have spent uh, s um, a couple hours to work on that. Finally, I found um, the one box uh, we used uh, have not enough disk space uh, on the computer, uh, um, on the normal compute. Uh, no, because the, um, all of the uh, VM flavors of the Cloud Foundry uh, used. Uh, has a, a disk uh, has the uh, disk root uh, root disk size, which accumulates uh, some uh, accumulate uh, more than uh, six uh, six hundred and eighty gigs. This is a, a very basic minimal requirement for cloud uh, for cloud foundry. Um, uh, but uh, but uh, for this box, it, it doesn't have uh, so much disk space. So it always reports no valid uh, host has found uh, was found. When when I get uh, um, get deep into the uh, dev stack, I found the uh, problems. Um, it fails the uh, disk uh, filter of the Nova scheduler, because the Nova scheduler will use the uh, default uh, uh, disk allocation uh, ratio config, which is equal uh, a one. 
So it assuming the the uh, uh, the disk uh, space requirement will uh, will be uh, uh, satisfied, but it is not true. Uh, so I changed the uh, parameters of disk allocation ratio to increase the to allow the overcommit of the disk uh, space, which um, uh, uh, which uh, does work. Um, but for for a uh, uh, for a uh, 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 if you have a more uh, uh, big environment or over stack, this might not a, a, a problem. Um, and and here we uh, also see the quarter of tenant tenant. By default, dev stack uh, uh, have uh, defined the very basic. Uh, uh, quarter of the each tenant, uh, such a for for example, it uh, only has uh, uh, ten uh, instance uh, for each tenant. So we before you start, you must uh, uh, increase the quarter of the of the tenant. Um, for vCPU, we uh, we did a, a simple calculation here. If we have um, for Cloud Foundry, we have four small flavors, uh, ten medium uh, flavors, and uh, um, one big uh, flavors, you, so we got uh, 40 uh, uh, vCPU requirements here. So if your uh, Cloud Foundry environment is bigger than this, and uh, you, uh, you you must consider the, the quarter of the uh, vCPU, and for uh, RAM and the instance quarter, you, uh, it's the same. This is a very basic environment uh, requirement. And uh, uh, just as uh, Tom has showed, we need to create a security group uh, because uh, Cloud Foundry need a lot of uh, has a lot of traffic, uh, lo network traffic between the, uh, each components. So you must allow uh, the uh, communications between the components. Um, so this is uh, some example of the port you have to um, allow uh, uh, opened. And uh, this is very interesting. Uh, why we need uh, internet access? Um, because we uh, firstly we use the dev stack uh, to install OpenStack uh, um, from um, um, by porting the uh, source code from GitHub, and so it will um, um, install that uh, depend. Uh, it will pull the packages uh, also from the internet. So uh, and uh, also. Uh, Bosch uh, can be deployed by using the uh, URL uh, as the um, to provide the address of the stem cell or Bosch release. So, uh, if you uh, want to use this feature, you must uh, allow the internet connection, internet access uh, uh, for your OpenStack environment. And uh, another very uh, uh, annoying issue in China, we have a Great Wall. So. Um, some of the um, services are blocked, such as S3. Some of the Bosch stem cell are blocked in by S3, uh, by the firewall. So it is very tough to deploy, uh, deploy the uh, Cloud Foundry. And the network issue. Uh, in, in the journey of, uh, uh, of this work, we found a network, uh, a very um, unknown, um, we accident accidentally found this problem. We ran into a very special uh, situation that uh, we we have two box. Um, two box uh, um, uh, has uh, fully uh, deployed the cloud found cloud foundry and OpenStack. So, um, but uh, when one box is ready, uh, we deployed a, a second one. Um, the Bosch director, uh, we blocked. Uh, we we. Um, we was um, we cannot uh, uh, successfully uh, successfully deploy uh, Bosch Director due to the uh, network issue, uh, because we uh, we use this uh, toolbox in the same network, and use the uh, Linux bridge uh, plus uh, flat DHCP, and also we uh, use the same uh, uh, manifest uh, deployment manifest, uh, which um, uh, has the same. A network uh, um, uh, IP address uh, configuration. So the the director, the two director will um, uh, conflict. In um, they will um, um, 
you, you will see the, uh, the Bosch CLI will fail to connect to the Bosch director due to the, uh, the, uh, the, the, IP, um, the IP address, the physical address or the MAC, MAC address of the director um, are in inconsistent state because of the, the, the LP package was uh, uh, sent out uh, through the uh, bridge and uh, uh, it get a, a two bridge to uh, reply this, uh, the different MAC address of the, uh, of the um, uh, your client, your board CI. So um, it always uh, um, um, shut off your uh, the, the connection between, the shut off the session between the, the your, your, your board CI and the director. Uh, at last we found uh, uh, this problem and uh, used a different uh, 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 subnet. Uh, IP with a different IP range to resolve this problem. So even in the, uh, such a simple, uh, uh, such a simple environment, you still be careful uh, about the uh, network isolation. So um, uh, so make sure you have a robust uh, uh, network isolation. Uh, when the when your cloud grows, you have to plan uh, how to uh, uh, manage this uh, network. Um, So the ne what's the next? So we have um, we will continue trying uh, to uh, deploy Bosch for every new OpenStack release and continue uh, survey the community's feedback to see uh, where uh, the problem exists. And uh, also we welcome the community um, to give uh, give us the feedback. And uh, I think for the community, um, they should drive strive for uh, more coherence uh, from the point. Uh, perspective, perspective of API um, and the back of uh, compatib compatibility. And also um, OpenStack community should engage uh, other communities such as Cloud Foundry to help to resolve these differences. Um, here is a list of some reference, the Bosch IO uh, uh, official website of Bosch project and uh, the Bosch uh, init, init tools there is a, a very a good article to interact, uh, introduce the Bosch uh, project. And uh, also there is a CPI pipeline is uh, online for, for you to take a look at the uh, project uh, status. Uh, the last one is our uh, video. Thank you. But if you do have questions, maybe we can entertain a couple. Anybody? No? Ah. Um, maybe the question is, uh, oh sorry, yeah. how to get it started or how is your, I mean, let's say from the point of view of operator, mm -hmm. uh, like how can we quickly get it started on Cloud Foundry, for example? So for Bosch community, we have a lot of tools to help the uh, starters. Uh, we have a box named the Bosch Lite to install all the Cloud Foundry nodes all in one uh, single virtual machine. So it's a very uh, easy tool to try Cloud Foundry deployment uh, using Bosch. So you can take a look at it. Is that available in the Bosch website? Uh, yeah, right. Oh, no, yeah. And uh, that article, there is an article link you should read. It's very um, helpful for you to start. Yeah. yeah, Maria with this, so this is very good to start very with. Good. Any other questions? Yeah, one, two. Say that again? Yes, of course, yes, of course. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming, appreciate it. Thank you.